Those who are liturgically inclined will notice that there was no gospel prior to the sermon. Following the Hebrew scripture, the psalm, the epistle, is to be the gospel. The gospel on Palm Sunday is traditionally a reading of the Passion. At this point, there is a dramatic shift in the service from the gospel heard at the beginning of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, where they entered with palms and praise, to shift our gaze to the events of Holy Week, leading to Jesus' crucifixion. This year I decided not to shift into the Passion. Not yet. We will do this as the week continues. You can consider this the beginning of the service, that will be continued at 7 p.m. on Thursday, 10 a.m. on Friday, throughout the day on Saturday, and ending with worship at 10 a.m. Easter Sunday morning. This year, most of us have been afforded the gift of time. We have the time to live through the passion story in increments, a gift of slowly letting the story sink in. I believe we have already started this process and journey through our present daily experiences. Over the past two weeks, I have had a number of video check-ins with the bishop and with colleagues. We've commented on how this has been the lentiest Lent we have ever lented. For those of us who have accessed worship on Sunday, it's our little piece of Easter each week that gives us hope to continue our walk through the valley. Thus the emphasis this morning on praise and not passion. In each of the sessions with colleagues, there is at least one person who has to pause when speaking because they are overwhelmed with emotion. When the bishop gives the blessing at the end of each meeting, Few of our eyes are dry. And I suspect that many of you, as you've been going through your day, have moments where a wave of emotion washes over you. Perhaps you shed a tear or feel like you could almost cry. I believe this is part of the process and journey through our present daily lives that will help us experience the journey of Holy Week perhaps for the first time in our lives. Palm Sunday, Holy Week, Easter Sunday, is a journey through an epic story. It is a story told in various ways by different gospel writers, a story that is chock full of words that ring true. Notice how I said ring true. I say this because from year to year, preachers, teachers, theologians, and those of us who wrestle with the truth in text may set aside parts of the story, considering them to lack fact and substance. Some of us may consider the story simply a story. Yet there are words that ring true. There's something about the story and the text that resonates with our current situation. The story sifts into our experience and seems to apply even if we can't explain how or why. This year, there is less parsing of words and meaning when coming to the text. I'm not looking for a novel insight to explain why Matthew's version of palm parade has a donkey and its colt. This doesn't seem important. Humans. Us, in new routines and living in a heightened anxiousness, have had barriers within us that have crumbled. And this manifests in stories being less a head exercise and more a heart experience. I'm excited, and perhaps a little apprehensive, to journey through Holy Week in a fragile, less in control kind of way. With our guards down, we have the opportunity to hear the story in a new way, to let emotion rule the day, feeling the word wash over us and simply let the word move through us. The word washing over us 
in this week's continuing epic story will pull and draw us into the very depths of ourselves where it will ruminate. Having grasped a deep, deeper ringing of truth, it will germinate to burst forth through the tomb and welcome a new dawn on Easter morning. Could this be the truth behind the poetry of Isaiah? The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. As many of you know, I am an avid, avid reader. I'm out of library books, and instead of ordering electronic books, I've decided to look to my own bookshelves. I have a special shelf with books that I return to again and again. Generally, I don't read books more than once because there are far too many choices and there are new things to learn and experience. There is simply not enough time to read everything. But instead of new, I have returned to a book by Betty Smith called A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. This is an old book published in 1943. It's a story of a little girl named Francie growing up in hard-working, poor immigrant neighborhoods in Brooklyn. <clears throat> there are challenges with work. No work, school, no school, a dad who is good, and other times drunk. Why I return to this book, and especially at this time, is because of Francie, her attitude, her outlook on life. One of her practices in the summer is to crawl out of their tiny apartment window and sit on the rusty fire escape with ice chips to savor and a library book to get lost in. The best part of this spot is the scraggly tree that grows up the fire escape to provide a curtain, a little bit of shade, a lot of light. light. The quote on the inside flap of the book reads, there's a tree that grows in Brooklyn. Some people call it the tree of heaven. No matter where its seed falls, it makes a tree which struggles to reach the sky. It grows in boarded up lots and out of neglected rubbish heaps. It grows out of cellar gratings. It is the only tree that grows out of cement. It grows lusciously, survives without sun, water, and seemingly without earth. It could be considered beautiful, except that there are too many of it. These words ring true for me as words that sustain the weary. The words resonate at a deep level, a level to which I'm unable to articulate to you either their value to me or my experience of the words. I believe this is what happens with church words too, the words. The word affects and influences, touches, impresses, and resonates with us, affecting us deeply. Have you said the creed or heard the blessing, recited the Lord's Prayer, and experienced them differently over the past three weeks? That I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. This week our journey will be much in keeping with the style of today's song. A section of Psalm 31. This psalm is a personal lament written by the psalmist in a time of perilous and perhaps life-threatening circumstances. There's a ringing of truth as the psalmist's words wash over us. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I'm in distress. My eye is away from grief and my soul and my body also, for my life is spent with sorrow. And my ears with sighing, my strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. Well, praise the Lord that the lament does not end here. Otherwise, it might just sound like the nightly news. A lament is different. It's strategic. The words are a journey to be experienced. A lament includes invocation, a complaint, a petition, words of trust, and words of praise. Through Holy Week, we will journey through the five elements of lament more than once. As invocation, we will call to God, we will pray, 
we will invite God's presence to be in our midst. As complaint and lament, we will do a lot of confessing, complaining about our humanness. We will come with hearts full of lament, full of fears, anxieties, and griefs for ourselves and for the world. As petitions, we will ask for forgiveness. We will pray for the world, for others, and for all of God's creation. We will hear the repetition of the words of trust, comfort, in the creed, the blessing, the absolution of sin, peace be with you. We will hear a familiar story that will weave phrases into the depths of our hearts, into the depths of who we are. And there will be expressions of praise. Today, that is in the waving of palms, in singing glory, God, and honor, truth ringing in our exclamation. Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We ask today, God, today we praise you. This week engage us in the exercise of lament, to journey with you to the cross. Wash over us the word, your epic story, that we experience it in fullness. As we struggle to reach the sky, to grow in boarded up lots and out of the neglected rubbish heaps deep within ourselves, help us to grow lushly. For blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 